Over the years, anglers have had an uncanny ability to find ways to catch fish. New products and techniques arrive every year, but that doesn't mean you can't be just as successful or have just as much fun as going old school. Well, it's wintertime in Minnesota. What do people here do in this state? Well, they hit the frozen water and they try to get fish out of the lake. That's what we're gonna do here today in the Park Rapids area, only we don't have any fishing poles with. Instead, we were on the lake to set gill nets for Tulabi with Jason Markla and his father, Mark. We got some of the guys back here right now. They've got a net in the water. If you notice, it's not very far off the shoreline here. And the reason for that is it's got to be in six feet or less of water. And in the wintertime, those tulipy come up into the shallower water to spawn and all the game fish go out to deeper water. So you got to do all your netting here where it's a little bit shallower. So they've had a net in the water. We're gonna see if we can get some fish in it. Once nets are set, typically they're left overnight and then checked every 24 hours. Just take the top part out and the weight dangles in the water. So leave the bottom of it in the water. Correct. Okay. And then any any words of wisdom on not falling in the hole? <laughs> it's not falling in the hole. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. This is what they call getting skunked. Nothing. Not a thing. So now we're just gonna put the net back in mm -hmm. and reset it. All right. Yep. Yep. Nobody said finding these fish would be easy. The netting season is a narrow window when tulabi are typically in the shallows. By doing it this time of year, obviously you're concentrating them, but more importantly, the, the game fish have moved out to deeper water generally. It seems like something that's been a tradition for people, but it's maybe not the tradition that it used to be. Is, is it still as popular as it once was? Before 1980, license sales were quite a bit higher. Somewhere around late 1970s, early 1980s, we saw a decline in license sales. Since then, it's generally been hovering around a thousand. Tulabi, otherwise known as cisco or herring, along with whitefish, are generally thought of more as a forage for walleye, muskie, lake trout, and northern pike, despite being sought after table fare by the die-hard netters who continue the tradition. 20 years. 20 years you've been fishing yep. this lake. Females come in, and then the males will follow, and it's about a two-week span here, and then they're done. Since our first net didn't net any fish, we moved down the shore to set another one. We're just gonna auger a hole here? Yeah, to check the depth. Okay. Otherwise you have to go. Do you have a depth stick? What do you use? Yes, sir, right there, they're marked. Okay. The red mark is six feet. Okay. Okay, we're good. We can stay at five feet or move it that way. Six feet is prime. Or let's, let's go six. Let's just start on this one here, and then we have to go that way. A rope measured out to 100 feet is used to mark where the net will be placed. I mean, a straight show. line up to right where he's standing. Okay. Can't have any beer till after five. You sure you know what you're doing with that thing? I do not. All right, good, let's run it. All right. Fire it up. After using a chainsaw to cut large holes for each end of your net, an auger drills a series of holes in between. The reason for this spacing between each hole is because that's how long that stick is. And they gotta pass that stick underneath and be able to reach it at each hole, so those holes are as far apart as that stick is long. Okay, we got it here. The rope is then attached to the pole, which then pulls the 100-foot net down into the lake. Once the net is in, two long poles hold it in place. So there's the end of our net right there. So then these poles on the front and the back uh, hold that net up so it holds it open on each end. Right. So our net's in place. Now we just sit back and wait for all the fish to show up, right? That's the, that's the funnest part of this sport, <laughs> waiting. I like it. The waiting can be the best part when you do it in a fish house. What's the most fish you've ever pulled out of one of those nets? 
80 fish. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. My nephew and I, uh, because it takes two people to do it, so he was probably 20 years old. And he was down here, lives in Virginia. So I says, Steve, I need some help. What do you mean help? With fishing. So I'll buy your license for you. He says, no, I got money. So he bought his own license, we bought license, we went, and he's, you probably won't catch anything. So we put the net in for one day, and the next morning we had 80 tulipies. So then, the legend was born. I thought it was harder than it was. Today went really smooth. Just like, wow, this is a, you guys made this sound really hard. No wonder nobody wants to try this. <laughs> I mean, a gill net's 130 bucks. And you could use an ax, you know, you can get an ax for 20 bucks. But we had, you know, we used a chainsaw because it was easier. Uh, it's not, I don't, I don't know, a couple kids sleds and a, some, you know, gloves. I don't know, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's that expensive. We headed back out the next day, hopeful we'd find fish in the net. I can, I can clearly see right through the hole there, there's, there's a fish down at the bottom right there. What did we do? We just left that bottom right in there, didn't we? Yeah, yep, leave the bottom in. Right. So now you gotta tell me how to do this, Dad. Just pull it straight through. There you go. One, they look pretty good size. Look like they're female. I think Minnesota is so walleye focused that we neglect a lot of fish species that are make awesome table fare. I, I don't I know nobody my age or younger that does this. Five tulipies not great, but I mean it's it's a start. Means they're still running. Well, it's better to poke in the eye. Makes it worthwhile. And the people we talk about, and they're just, you know, it's a, just an older style of, you know, catching. And uh, I think it's pretty cool to keep that alive. So it was important to, to see it, you know, and do it for me. Now that we had our fish, it was time to get them in the smoker. Yeah, that, well, that's the whole other half of it, right? I mean, it's like, you have all you have these fish, and now it's time to to do something with them. Yeah, we're gonna prepare them for the brine, um, and then to smoke them in half. So, see, the reason you cut the back in half, the smoke's easier, more even. Cleaning tulipies is easy. After removing the head, you slice the fish in half, starting at the top, leaving it attached at the stomach. After giving the inside a good rinse, it's ready for the brine. All right. The next step in the process is we need to make a brine. So we got some pre-measured out ingredients here. We got four cups of water. We got a cup of soy sauce. Soy sauce makes everything taste good. We got a quarter cup of uh, salt, three quarters cup uh, brown sugar, a tablespoon of garlic. But before we bring it to the stove, we gotta add some rooster lager to make this our own. Cooking with beer is always fun, especially when you get to have one. <laughs> Give that a light stir. Now we're gonna have to put this on the stove and boil it and then let it cool before we pour it over the fish. And we'll actually brine it in this pan and just cover it in the fridge for 24 hours. And you, then you put them in the smoker skin side down? Yes, skin side down with the old poplar trees. He's the best smoker. 180 and 200 for three and a half hours and it comes out looking like this. Yes. Looks delicious. I mean, it is just like eating trout. It tastes like that. It's got that same kind of consistency mm. to it. I can't believe more people don't do this. Well, around right. here they do. Mm. <laughs> Park Rapids, you guys got to figure it out. Mm. Very good. Well, thank you for sharing it with us. It's been a great time. You're welcome. And I don't know what you guys are going to eat, but I'm taking this with me. <laughs> <laughs> Different lakes in Minnesota have varying regulations on netting tulipy and whitefish. Check the DNR's website to find out how you can get out and enjoy this tradition that involves a unique way of targeting some delicious fish.